scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Let me show you something. Psalms 55. Please, let's rush. Psalm 60, Psalms 55. Verse 12 to 14, Psalm 55. Please look up. Let me show you certain possibilities that can happen with these friends. Ready? Look up. Let's read. Let's hurry up. For it was not an enemy that reproached me. Please give us Amplified. 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 Today we are working with Amplified. He said, for it was not an enemy who reproaches me and taunts me. He said, then I might bear it. In other words, the person causing me pain is not even my enemy. I would have been able to bear it. He said, no, you see the one who has hated me insolently, who found himself against me, then I might hide from him. Verse 13. He said, but it was you, a man, my equal, my companion, and my what? Familiar friend. When I heard about the rumor, I thought it was my enemies. I got to a point where I would never believe that it was you who ate with me. Are we together now? He said, I thought it was an enemy. It's easy. That's their work. But you? How many husbands sacrifice their wives for money? Are we together? They come for a meeting like Koinonia and you are together with somebody and in the middle of ministration and everything you get to find out for instance that that person have you not seen uncles who are the ones who tie the destinies of families when somebody dies they who kill the person will come and say you mean he died ah but it was you a man my equal the person i call companion you are the mother of my children look at what delilah did to samson She was the one who walked with this macho man. This mysteriously strong man. She laughed with him. Imagine when she would tell him something. You know I love you. I'll be something. How is it today? But she would run to the Philistines and say, I found the secret. We will kill this man. I pray for you sincerely. Listen to me. I pray for you. That in the course of this teaching, God will identify to you certain people who you may not avoid, but keep a distance otherwise they will kill you and bury you and go and say your obituary they will kill you bury you a police officer once told me a story of a boy that killed his father he killed his father spilled the blood threw everything away and then he ran and was crying and called people that his father was dead It was later on that they discovered that it was the boy that killed his father. Why did the boy kill his father? Some money just came in for the father. And he killed the father. Is it not the brothers of Joseph that sold him? It's in your Bible. Brother, brother, same. I mean, you can imagine. Same father. May not be the same mother, but at least same father. They grew up together. And the brother said, Kai, how do we kill this? They threw their brother in a well. And you would think it would touch them. They saw some people and they said, let's make money from our brother. Look at Judas. 
trying to make money of Jesus. It was you. A man my equal, my companion, my familiar friend. We started this relationship together. I was happy, but I never knew that in your mind you were out to just destroy me. Number three, we have to run. The third kinds of people according to motif that you will meet in your life. Is God giving you wisdom tonight? Those who do not love you, nor what you represent, but will partner with you to fight a bigger enemy for them. Listen, this third category, they do not love you. They don't love your vision. But they are confronted with an enemy that is bigger than them. So temporarily, they will come into partnership with you to help them fight a bigger enemy. And then after that, they will return to their default position. Listen. Do you know the Pharisees and the Sadducees were enemies? We all study the Bible here, is that true? Do you know that the Pharisees and the Sadducees never agree? One of their chief point of contention was the concept of resurrection. Are we together? But when Jesus showed up, Jesus was a bigger enemy than their personal differences. So they came together as a team to make sure they fight Jesus to death. We never see Pharisees and Sadducees struggling and fighting during Jesus' time. When Jesus dies, then their contention continues. When Paul the apostle shows up, they are busy fighting. In fact, he uses that as an advantage to bail himself out at a point. Listen, let me tell you the danger of this. All of a sudden, you will find out that somebody who hates you is trying to look for a job and you know the person to give her that job. So for that temporary time, she will come to you and be your friend for the sake. The person hates you, but needs the access you have. So the whole attention is that other person, not you. Are we together? And becomes your friend. And in that process, you run your mouth thinking you are talking to a friend. This is what God is doing. Can you imagine that this brother asks me out and she's laughing? The whole idea. By the time that greater enemy is conquered, you will now say, why did I open my mouth to a wrong person? Many of us have given ourselves cheap because somebody all of a sudden steps into your life and you say, I made a new friend. We are just two days, but my goodness, there's nothing the person doesn't know about me. Could it be? I have seen many, I, I say this with all humility, I've seen many sincere, nice and well-meaning pastors sometimes they come for a meeting maybe when i go to minister somewhere and they see what the power of god does and all of that and you know that they are desperate for growth or they are desperate for something and they don't even know me but they are in such desperation for a passion they now send me a text and say ah my covenant brother or man of god i want us to be covenant friends and in my mind i say no 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 i don't want to be your covenant friend i don't know who you are i don't know what your convictions are i love you but you don't become friends like that to solve a bigger enemy to to fight and kill a bigger enemy are we together yeah. when there is crisis in zaria or crisis all over nobody says which church do you attend what do you believe are we together all Christians come as one group, even if it's a smoker that was born, as in he's not born again. The fact that most of the guys that fight, are they believers? Some of you self can give them money for wee wee because they are representing the camp of Christians. And so at that point, this is a boy you will, you will say if you see him near your house or with your daughter, but because you need protection, you will now call him and say, ah, while they are patrolling, they should make sure they come around your place. Now say, You know what that boy is going to do with that money. But you give him. Because momentarily, you need that protection. The moment 
soldiers come and take over the place and the next day he comes to knock he will tell him let me not see you in my house again these are the third category of people they hate you they would kill you if they have room for you. they hated barabbas before jesus came barabbas was a thief he was a notorious criminal they hated him and that's why they caught barabbas and locked barabbas so that they could have peace but compared to jesus barabbas became a friend are you seeing that and they say release barabbas for us we know he's a criminal but we so want this guy to die if it takes releasing barabbas let it be brothers and sisters listen especially for those who are leaders every one of us will have these three categories of people in your life they are not necessarily enemies it's just how they are they come with different motives and if you do not have the grace to discern you will cast your pearl before swine you will reveal destiny secrets and things about your life to people who do not merit it this is what many of us have done someone comes in your, into your life in 10 minutes he knows about your father your mother he knows what your father did to your mother in 10 minutes he has entered your bedroom you have shown him everything my father is even supposed to collect one check today can you imagine see i don't know what is making me just tell you everything foolishness let me tell you what is making you say it i know what is making you say it foolishness that's the name foolishness are we together many of us have given ourselves cheap today there are too many people with informations about our lives that are not necessary because we did not discern what kind of people we did not let them qualify and grow into access to our lives i don't cast spell before swine now let me tell you something if i call you my friend then you are my friend indeed i'm not a difficult person but it takes standards there are not many people especially men of god that i tell you this is my friend i love people i'm happy i joke around with people but i know people that i can sit down and discuss destiny things it's difficult we'll go to the next session now very important but i want us to pray and say lord let these truths that i've had tonight grant me grace that I will not look at people as the same. People come with motives. Let the motives give the access that they will have to my life. Please pray. Inside and outside and around, please pray. Lord, I have made costly mistakes. Because I have thought everyone who comes around is a true friend. I have betrayed my trust. I have betrayed secrets that you have committed to my life. I've been careless. Those who love you, they are committed to you. Some of us have generalized people. You don't even know those who really matter in your life again. Everyone you see, you keep them at bay. There are some people that should be so close to you, but you could not discern that these are the people who can die with you and can die for you you have thrown them away because they don't have money you have thrown them away because they didn't go to school you have thrown them away because their parents are not rich lord give me the eyes to see to know those that i will hold so dear to know those that i will still be in friendship with after 30 years 20 years hallelujah session two right please maintaining relationships i want to teach you something very quickly because i need us to finish this is god blessing us maintaining relationships there are many teachings that we have taught about relationships both love relationships and all of that you can make reference to them the mystery of marriage 
relationship and family life series and then the latest was challenging discussions on late marriage i won't want to repeat myself on these issues you can get the message at the media stand is free but then i want to share with us just three things that i believe will help us maintain relationships there are many of us who don't know how to maintain relationships i'm not just talking of love relationships although it applies to it relationships in general listen even if what is given to you is a gift it is maintained by principles it may come as a gift but it's not maintained as a gift it comes as a gift but is maintained by principles and i want to show you certain things now hallelujah tabitha come let me use her for instance the first thing i want you to learn about relationships and this applies also to love relationships in fact it applies majorly did you know why two people can be in a relationship listen please they may be nice people but there's a lot of tension in that relationship it could be two guys who are destiny friends but they they never seem to be able to stay together i'll tell you why number one is the concept of value the first key sorry you're standing with me you should be writing but you'll get it the concept of value write this word down to be valued to be valued means to be given an impression that you are not easily replaceable to be valued means to be given an impression that you are not easily replaceable to be valued means to be given an impression that you are not easily replaceable brothers and sisters there is nobody including joshua selma who can survive any kind of relationship that devalues you i've taught us i've taught us in the in school of ministry and i think I've, I've also taught us here um i think principles of effective living you can get the teaching that the highest psychological need i want you to cram this and know this for the rest of your life the highest psychological need of any man is the need to feel loved the need to feel appreciated and the need to feel important any man will hate you if you trunk if you truncate on this and by man i meet both male and female so i'm in a relationship with tabitha watch this and because of my ego as a man of god or as a public figure or as a leader or a successful businessman i keep creating a body language or communications that give tabitha an impression like look do you know how many other ladies love me are we together are you blind don't you see the way other ladies may want me to be in a relationship with them it's a privilege that you are around me i want you to never forget that you see i am i am feeding her with an understanding that you are of a lesser value now temperaments different she may i mean temperaments are different they, they differ she may be able to absorb it like that and just swallow it but i'm doing something to her i'm diminishing her self-worth i'm diminishing her self-image are we together now i'm taking advantage of maybe her background i'm taking advantage of her level of exposure i'm taking her advan advantage of her idea about herself and i'm using it to boost my ego the concept of value nobody can work with you in a business in a ministry in a corporation whenever they feel truncated especially in a love relationship you see a lot of fathers mothers husbands young people in relationships they give that lady an impression that you are not valued or the lady gives the guy an impression when you came to ask me out there were 10 guys i carefully selected and i selected you so you see that kind of 
irrational idea and so you give the guy an impression like you were selected out of many so you better keep being a chaser for the rest of your life because i don't plan to commit myself this is a relationship that is still shaking many ladies like giving that impression when the guy behaves say no problem at least somebody is going to call me this evening and you will hear what i will tell him so that threat is supposed to diminish the guy to make him look like it was just because he spoke to HOD technical and he spoke to me that's why I told you yes don't think I just respect Nasne to say yes on a very good day if not because of koinonia who dash monkey banana an impression listen some of us do it unconsciously but you have to change tonight especially when there are obvious flaws in the lives of the people that you can use it's a different thing if you are talking against the person and there may be nothing you are just lying that becomes foolishness but there are times that what you are saying may be true and it may have a justifiable basis are we together so i come to tabitha and i tell her i i used to be a drunkard i used to be in fact i'm even surprised i'm in the church today and she uses it to say look i've been a serious lady with god and you just you just meandered your way into church and you were rescued don't ever think we are the same yes the blood of jesus yes new creation in christ but me and you know we are not the same you see that kind of thing so forever she keeps giving me an understanding i'm managing you never forget a possibility of replacing you still exists it's a terrible way it causes tension you will never be able to maintain relationships like that whether it is a business relationship and all of that one of the things that i have particularly done especially for the heads of department is to make them feel loved and valued they know if not because you know me you can ask all those who travel with me for ministrations most times when they come to receive us sincerely those who do not know me don't even know who is apostle because I just jumped down with my earphone, polo and my jeans and all of that. Most times they may think he's Victor or Mike or somebody. And they're like, good afternoon, sir. Then they see them maybe holding my luggage or something. And then they don't know who to greet again. And they're wondering, sorry, who is apostle? They're trying to be careful. Can you be that open with people and yet secured in yourself? Or must you tell them, no, 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 no. I lead the way. Walk behind. Let ev Or go forward. And then after they are finished with you, then I show up. Say I'm the one wrong understanding that came from culture we incorporate it into ministry are we together now yes value if you are in a relationship here God is asking you a question tonight have you given your partner or your husband not even a love relationship it could be anything business ministry like koinonia have you communicated value whenever people stay close to you whenever people talk to you do you give them an idea that they are important especially when they don't have anything to contribute to your life if i have something to benefit from promise it's easy for me to treat him well because if I don't treat him well, I will not get what I want. But can you treat everybody alright? Some of you see the way I greet some of these are children that come around. You see all of them run and come to hug me. I'm telling you, if you know the way I love these people, I do that. Because I love them passionately. They don't have anything to give me. Whether financially or otherwise. But I love them sincerely. You see the way I greet people. I never look at somebody and I'm looking at his hand. Okay, I'm seeing you holding a brown envelope this way, sir. And then you come and then the way I hug you, I say, I, I like if we have five of you in Koinonia, I'll be happy. Then the other one who says, man of God, even the transport right now to go down. I came from Gaskia. You don't want those kinds of people. Value. Value. Number two. Tabitha, I use you again. You have to be able to give people value, a sense of value. Number two, mutual honor. 
the second key to maintaining all kinds of relationships is mutual honor two-sided honor two-sided honor dr mike mudok defines honor as a celebration of your uniqueness not just a recognition of it an open and public celebration of your difference now look up please especially brothers let me show you where you have been missing it unconsciously especially in relationships and this applies to all those who have had some level of influence whether you're a pastor here heads of department and all of that because or business people anybody that has any measure of success the position that god has put us tells us to be victims of this we like one-sided honor because we think that one-sided honor creates a potential difference enough for people to see where we stand against the person who is honoring us and so we are embarrassed to show two-sided honor so if tabitha comes right now and then tabitha gets down on her knees maybe, no 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 don't kneel down she you know maybe to say oh man of god i appreciate you i make sure that i leave her there to be clear enough to those who are watching they don't know me but i deliberately leave her there i i enjoy the honor generously are we together now to a point that it becomes a humiliation for her so if it is prayer just a simple prayer that i was to say god bless you it changes to another prayer and i shout it deliberately lord i pray for this and everybody turns ah, ah, who is this guy kneeling down oh apostle one-sided honor you see how we create tensions in our relationships you see how we create tensions in marriages are we together now honor must be two-sided brothers and sisters a man cannot be there calling his wife telling everybody she's a nice lady and looking and saying, my wife this is my wife wonderful lady I mean all the things men say she's my this and that and that and then the woman is not looking for an occasion to reciprocate she's just there smiling and receiving it as if the man is a thief standing close to her you find a way of reciprocating the honor are you seeing why people get frustrated eventually because the lady is doing what she thinks is the attribute of a virtuous woman and the man is just absorbing it as a right there are people in this valentine right now for instance is only the lady who is thinking of doing something for the guy we have been drumming this thing since last week valentine is, is um, on sunday but the guy will act as if he doesn't know anything. Also, ah, it's even valid. You know, the way ministry is, guy, this ministry self, honestly. Apostle said this is a year of multiplied grace and influence. Walk, 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 walk. Aside from relationship, what of mutual friends? I've taught the heads of department to love themselves and appreciate themselves. And you see that in their attitudes. They honor one another. If you see Benga treating Nas or Abiodu, you may look and think, ah, ah, why is this guy doing this? Then another occasion will come and you'll hear them. You see the way they walk. Listen, listen. I want you to learn this. Honor is mutual. True honor is mutual. Even when it's obvious that there is a gap, there is a difference, there is a disparity. You must create an occasion to honor them. During my birthday last year, this, um, many of the, the, the children that are little ones that come to greet me, when they came to greet me, I appreciated them sincerely. And when I did, they wrote me a letter. They came together and wrote me a letter. Now, I'm not the kind of person who will sit down and be writing letters. But when I, I was so touched, and I said to them, they came together to do this. I had to write them a letter again to reply it and to drop that was my honoring them honoring their idea of value for me there are people who send me recharge card oh man of god you have blessed my life you may not know me and i respond back to them i appreciate what you're doing i truly truly appreciate it every time we meet as leaders most times i begin my my talk with them by saying guys i appreciate you it's easy for people to see what is happening in koinonia and think it's just joshua selman and the anointing upon his life but you are the ones who make things happen in the secret and i appreciate them 
do you take out time to make your honor mutual or is it one-sided every time you are the one everybody is saying this and that too. oh pastor femi ah you have changed my life and pastor femi says are you joking you you don't you think i am just fasting and praying for nothing So there is tension when there is no mutual honor. When I honor Tabitha and she knows that I do it from my heart and I will do it openly. And Tabitha also makes it as a point of duty. When you watch Dr. Paul Enenche and his wife, every time he's talking about his wife, she stands up wherever she is. The moment he's giving an example, she will stand up and remain standing till he finishes and every time he comes up if it's his wife that is going to preach he must be the one to introduce her how many of you have noticed it he will come up and say we're about to receive from the woman of god not my wife from the woman of god dr mrs becky and Enche, and she comes up mutual honor i want to appreciate my husband the man of god and he's there just boiling and sitting down and he comes up and says eh, don't mind my wife let's go to the world i see what is the meaning of that no you take out time and you are generous enough not flattery but let her know you appreciate let me tell you something listen listen learn this especially for great leaders every idea about your wife is a reflection of what you gave people are we together now every idea if i belittle benga I believe to Abiodu or all the heads of departments and all of them there, it will transfer to them. You know why you honor them very much? You honor them because it was deliberate to create the platform. You dishonor me, they will rebuke you because they love me. And they know that I honor, I honor them. Are we together now? You must learn this. If you are embarrassed to honor your spouse, husband, wife, the person you are in a relationship you are embarrassed the person cannot maybe um, doesn't have that kind of social orientation right the person is not yet rich this and that and that and you are ashamed no that's a shame mutual honor and this must not be what you do in the open you can do it any other way you have a business partner you're working together you may be smarter than the person but you take out time to tell the person look i appreciate you i know that i have brought more money in this but look at your creativity your discipline hallelujah as a pastor you have your assistant you have people there one time you come up on stage and you're like my goodness I, I, did you hear what pastor soso said i mean this is a revelation that blew my mind it's a way it looks childish but you are honoring him he's impressed that he was able to bring a revelation that even his superior was impressed with not that you come up and you say you know in 93 when god was showing me what this guy was saying i'm even impressed you've learned it fast what are you doing you it looks like you are endorsing your geo ship but what you are doing is that you are killing the people we do this a lot in africa because of this our mindset i've made it a point of duty to honor the people ladies you don't have to marry first to honor the man god has put in your life don't say even god knows god sees the heart men look at the outward appearance so you have to find a way of communicating it openly honor mutual honor can I use it for one more example? Thank you. Hallelujah. The third key to maintaining relationships. Is God blessing us tonight? Now, this is very serious. I want you to pay attention because I'll spend a minute or two, five minutes to talk on this area. The third key to maintaining relationships is clarity. Write it down. Clarity and definiteness of motives, roles, and expectations clarity and definiteness of motives 
roles and expectations this is probably of the three one of the biggest reasons why any kind of relationship will not be able to stand there's too much ambiguity in many relationships no clarity no definiteness of motives listen back to our example i'm with tabitha i am so close to tabitha i love tabitha so much to an extent that if i see any guy even if it is worship team song for next week he's giving her she will notice the frown in my face brothers and sisters let me tell you this if you are close to a lady you've not asked her out but the moment you see another guy with her something strikes your heart your heart is already connecting you see the first way we accept things in africa is denial <laughs> the first way we accept things in africa is denial we deny until the denial makes a fool of us then we admit it thank you are we together now so who is tabitha to me when you see us in the restaurant it's me and tabitha now there's nothing wrong if you have your, yes you are friends of course compatibility but brothers and sisters there is an invisible line between general friendship and friendship that is becoming intimate supposedly heading to a relationship are we together now listen listen please write this down and ladies hear this counsel and be happy avoid undue closeness if there is nothing defined happening over a period of time avoid undue closeness if there is nothing happening nothing defined happening over a period of time i counsel ladies and guys and brothers and sisters most and many of the heart shattering experiences of people is because of assumptions who is tabitha to me i'm with tabitha all the time i claim nothing is happening between me and tabitha we talk for two hours during the day one hour in the night 30 minutes before morning are we together now now listen i may not have intended for a relationship tabitha may not have intended for a relationship but the truth of the matter is that the way we are going is becoming clear that we are becoming too close for just general friendship are we together now a lady just comes to hug me and i come back and tabitha now cracks a joke and say eh, i'm seeing all of them I. but i know she's not playing she's taking that thing seriously it's already a sign that she's becoming um, i want to say economically committed <laughs> <laughs> she's becoming emotionally committed listen there is nothing you see one thing with ladies brothers let me tell you a very big secret about ladies it's not very easy for ladies to be committed emotionally but when they do they can do it to a fault so you have to be careful there is a level to which a lady becomes so committed to you the day you now summon courage to look at her and say look uh, tabitha i really appreciate this our two years of of coming to koinonia every day every time we sit in the same seat but um i think you heard what apostle said in koinonia we really have to talk about this and listen this this thing right now say you know there's nothing abi what do you expect her to say there's something she said, well it's all right there's nothing and then she goes back one hour later you are calling how are you feeling about it my brother you too ask yourself what are you doing oh come on you should clap for me here He leads me and guides me to the city up above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. He leads me and guides me to the city up above. He leads me and guides me to my
my place of destiny. Listen. So clarity of motives. Listen. You see, another danger of clarifying motives is promise may be looking at Tabitha. This is the house of God. Are we together? Promise is looking at Tabitha and he's praying. He's discussing with Pastor Femi. I like this lady. Are we together now? While that is happening, I'm here blocking every space. You see what we do sometimes that we don't know? Because promise cannot be fighting with me. We are brothers. I will say it. We are brothers in the house of God. Now I'm here and promise assumes that this guy is already there. Okay, I love the lady, but I mean, the kingdom advances. Even if it's not me, I'm happy because the person in her life. So at the end of it, this lady does everything, graduates, says no to every godly brother that has vision and can ask her out, waiting in expectation for who? Joshua Selman. Are you seeing that now? And then at the end of it, then you now say, I think I should start considering a relationship now. And she's smiling because in her mind she's saying, wow, this guy is ready to take this our thing to the next level. And then all of a sudden, some guys even get so bad, you keep talking with the lady, you keep doing everything, and one day you just find out that the guy is already seeing the parents of somebody else. Whereas every communication with this other sister is still intact, nothing changed. There was no sign. Now, brothers, you may be doing it sincerely, but I'm telling us this, we have to learn and it must stop. Ladies are very sensitive. And hear me, this is the house of God. Brothers, behold your wives. Wives, behold your brothers. We are adults, there's nothing to hide. Your wives will come from here largely, your husbands will come from here. And most of our sisters have been well taught. If I say our sisters are not nice people, I'm saying I'm a fool because I'm the one who taught them. Most of the sisters, God has helped them. Do you know that almost every lady that I've spoken to this year are saying they are ready to settle down this year? And it's not a lie. They really are ready. That, what does that mean? We are human beings. It's not about being desperate. That means when a brother begins to draw unusually close, the sister expects that he knows what he's doing. Are we together? Because we have preached this again and again. So she expects that he knows what he's doing. Now the brother has not been able to sort himself out. And he's there, he's nice. Now, there are brothers who our problem is that we don't know what we want. We don't know what we are looking for. We don't even know where we are going. You want what is in Amaka to enter what is in Marion. Enter what is in uh, Mesitila. Enter what is in uh, Tabitha. That's, that becomes your wife. Please, you are dreaming. Please, you are dreaming. That's what you say. So, whenever you are in Koinonia and you hear Tabitha singing, all of a sudden you remember that you've always dreamt of a worshiper. You wake up in the morning with three or four children and there's solid worship going on in your house. That's, that's a very kingdom paradigm and I appreciate you for that. Except for the fact that while that is happening, you also want a chef. You want Shahoma to be cooking for you. I mean, you want a lady who can cook. Are we together? And then after that, you also want a lady who is a first class student. You see, all of these combinations, you all want them in one person. You, you are joking. It doesn't exist. In the name of Jesus Christ. It doesn't exist. We are going to pray. I know you are laughing, but I came to pour my heart to really talk to us because I want us to benefit maximally. Are we together? So, Tabitha is in a state of extreme emotional tension. She doesn't know what to call the name of what we are doing. Do you know this is why some ladies now run away from any guy? It's not that they are bad or they don't want a relationship. They just don't want all of this heartbreak. Brothers, now you are a victim. You like the girl, but she likes you too, but she's running away because of the accumulation of emotional pain she's gone through. As a result of a brother coming, am I coming on? No, no, no. 
it must change the most hot in all this i tell you sincerely are the ladies do you know why because in their attempt to be virtuous and faithful by the time nurse is coming to tabitha tabitha positions herself and in her mind she wants to honor what nurse is doing because she knows that he's coming and every body language he's giving shows that he's coming to her are we together and now she she risks herself to make sure that she avoids any other guy because she's positioning herself to be committed which is supposed to be a very good thing for a responsible lady but now she drives the guys positions herself nurse is close today tomorrow he's back and this happens for many years only to leave her in pain and untold disappointment is god speaking to us now bless you my dear thank you clap for her please let's appreciate her so there must be clarity now please let me balance this it doesn't mean after koinonia a brother just looks at you and says shahoma i say well, what is the name of what we are doing say it now ah that's too early you don't become too forward on people just because of that or somebody just sent you a wonderful text it may even be a valentine present and, mm, what are we doing no that's not what i'm teaching you but i'm saying over a period of time there should be definiteness there should be definiteness i've seen certain brothers get close to certain ladies and most times they come and meet me i joke a lot with them and i say ah the way you are looking at this lady say ah apostle drew true yeah i like this guy said oh she's a nice lady I'm, i'll be praying for you you know i can crack jokes with them and the day he asks out and the lady says she's doing I, for me i'm happy when two of them come i say i'm, I'm really happy you people will make a great couple god bless you not the one that the lady comes to me and says apostle there are three guys a b c whereas the b she's talking about came and met me already and said there's one sister her name is d so the sister is classifying the guy among her suitors whereas he has even come to tell me that the person i'm looking at is not even this so the lady is there thinking he is part of those who love her please let's clarify all these loose ends must be tied this valentine in the name of jesus christ definiteness of roles roles this is very important who can i okay tabitha can you come again when you are tired ba? okay be writing you come it's your turn now come definiteness of roles now watch this i'm married to this lady now this is my wife listen who are we in this marriage what what are her roles let's even start from a relationship this also applies to marriage see when there is no clarity of roles there will be tension are we together it's obvious that one of her roles is to give me children i don't have a womb so that's not something we have to explain to one another she knows but what of other things who is the chief financial burden bearer in this relationship this applies also to roommates oh you are a roommate okay are you a roommate by association or you're a roommate by contract is it that you paid the money to or the generosity of a friend put you there we are business partners what what is your role in this business is god speaking to us now oh we are in this ministry together what is your role co-founders assistant a member who is just a faithful follower what are you there must be definiteness of roles nobody will come and just sit down there is a place a mark for heads of department nobody will just come and sit down if, if he sits down it's not even them someone else will tap him and say no 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 there are seats that are reserved because of clarity and definiteness this section is for worship team that section is for media there is clarity definiteness of roles in this relationship who cooks two of us you when i cook is it a right or is help when you pay school fees for the children is it you, you see there must be clarity we sit down and we guess roles and that's what brings tension so the woman is collecting three hundred thousand, and the man is collecting hundred thousand. 
it still does not mean because she's collecting 300,000 she must be the one to pay school fees for children it is never never her responsibility any woman who does that does that out of love and a communication of virtue it's not a right because the Bible says any man that cannot cater the hallmark of manhood and masculinity is provision and protection any man that cannot provide, any man that cannot protect. In this home, I am the priest of the house. I oversee the spiritual growth and the progress of my wife, my children, and all who are with me. In this house, my wife is not a house girl. My wife is not a concubine. Are we together? My wife is not whatever it is. So my mother will not come or my mother-in-law and come and make my wife look like a third class citizen. I love my mother. I love my mother-in-law in and all of that. But we have become one with this lady. And I'm not going to watch anybody truncate on her just because of loyalty. Now, we come from cultures that have all kinds of perspectives about marriage. There are cultures that really don't give their children mother and father and all these people are still in control of the home because it's tension is god speaking to us now what is her role what is her role there are families where the woman does not have the right to authorize anything in the family mommy i want to take that yogurt say please so go and ask your father you see that because the impression the man has given is that i am king of kings and lord of lords and not even this woman can usurp on my authority a man can have seven cars in the house yet the wife is still taking transport have you seen people like that taking transport she does not know and then you find out that his friend's wife is coming from the airport and he will send the son or a driver with one of the car to go and pick her why would she not say you are having an affair with the friend's wife hallelujah your wife is in the house listen we're going to pray what i'm saying is very important your wife is in the house and all of a sudden a strange woman comes and you see her with measuring tape measuring chairs in the parlor madam who are you mm -mm. or oh, god sent me i don't have anything to tell you in my house i'm a tailor if you want to know i'm trying to measure some things i want to make tablecloth and all of that and say, but I at least you are supposed to tell me you didn't even greet me. Please, madam, don't talk to me. Go and talk to your husband. The woman is right. The husband is supposed to say, When you go to that house, my wife is there. Make sure you greet her and talk to her. I'm saying this because that's the family many of us came from, and that's the mindset we have. It's already reflecting on our relationships. We are embarrassed to allow the woman to take her place hallelujah there are there are there are some ladies in this place because of how close and knitted i am when they come to my place there are people who come to my place and they are shaking and sitting down because of the level of relationship there are certain people when they come they don't even ask me anything they go to the fridge and just open there's one of the ladies here i will not mention her name she knows herself when she steps into this place with her friends she just goes open and she's, she may be giving them more and she'll say this is my father's house and I just sit down and watch. Brothers have hot ladies more than they can imagine. Sometimes doing it sincerely, God is speaking to us that we need to make amends tonight. There are many people following online. There are people inside and outside. God is showing you the loose ends while there may be tension in your relationship. The lady suspects any guy that comes around you because you have not clarified her position in your life. The wife sees every man that comes, whether it is from your office, and she says, Madam, what do you want? Oh, it's Ogara. He's not around. Please go. Because she's thinking you are coming to wreck her home. The man has a responsibility. You see a husband and a wife in church. They don't even sit down together. The man hates it. You find one small girl and just sit down 
and they say turn to your neighbor and you see an elderly man just trying to look and say you turn now our and the wife is watching from where she is the man is driving when he's driving with his wife you will know it's his wife because he will turn his face one side shouting and yelling at her embarrassing her but when he carries his daughter's friends he's dropping them somewhere how are you have you eaten there we just passed a restaurant are you sure you want daddy can buy food for you it's not daddy anything there is something he's suffering that if he's not humble enough to address so see let me tell you something some men may not sleep around they may not do certain things but there is an affinity for unfaithfulness it may never lead to immorality but it's an they enjoy if you enjoy the presence of any other person than your wife something is wrong many women have done well but thou excellest them all imagine looking at you and telling you many women have done well eh? but you excel them all she will be happy she may not do it now because we have, we have this video camera but she will be happy there's no lady I know who will not be happy brothers could this be why your relationship is almost tearing apart husbands fathers could this be why your marriage is tearing apart there's no flavor because your wife is a slave she's happier being in koinonia than going back home and let me tell you the trouble with this kind of men and women except you are in their house you will never believe that's what they are doing because the impression they give outside is very different that's why you see them saying we have a man of god apostle joshua selman a father indeed very humble and the wife is just nodding and saying you people don't know what you are saying awards after awards and i may think because i'm collecting those awards i'm a good father i may even be counseling certain people this is how you should do your marriage whereas yours is in a mess i live to praise your name and i have no fear of what tomorrow brings Sing it just one time. I live to praise your name. I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. Hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you, my dear. I already began to answer session three. Give me five minutes and I'm done and we'll pray. This is the discussion now. What could be wrong? A, if you are struggling to love your partner please listen i know our time is on but i want everybody to please pay attention just get this because god is about to answer many people's questions right now what could be wrong if i am in a relationship with amaka but i am struggling to love her she's born again i'm born again is god speaking to us what could be wrong if shalom is in a relationship with benga and she cannot love him or if they are married many couples many people go through this and they never study what is it a message from god is it a message from the devil is it a sign please hear this what could be wrong if you are struggling to love your partner listen your partner can be the person you are going out with or it can be your husband or wife or business partner whatever it is this is what can be wrong listen what could be wrong if you are struggling to love your partner number one it can be that you are unequally yoked that could be why you are struggling to love the person you are in a relationship with somebody that is not you are unequally yoked he's not in christ you see that he does not have the value system of the kingdom or maybe when you got married you got married carelessly now don't feel bad please especially for those of us who are married you got married carelessly you had a challenging past and now you are married to a man who you are now born again but you are living with this guy he's obviously not born again you find out that there is a problem connecting with him so the first explanation could be because you are unequally yoked number two what could be wrong if you are struggling to love your partner still still on the same point i'm giving you the second reason the second reason can be please listen and pay attention carefully 
the second reason can be that your spirit has picked a signal of danger and is communicating that signal to you especially when there is no physical reason to necessitate that kind of fear ah, i'm giving you i'm giving you a big secret that will help many of you tonight people have come to me for counseling i know this brother loves god i know this sister loves god they are all people here they may even be workers maybe even leaders and they start a relationship or about to start a relationship or are even married and you find out as a brother this lady come um, um martha i love martha all right or i'm in a relationship with martha but every time we go on in that relationship it's like there is an invisible force of repulsion something i still don't know what it is if it's beauty she's fine if it's to love god she loves god if it's commitment she's virtuous but i don't know what is driving me away from her let me tell you it no longer is a physical thing there is a spiritual contention i want to explain something to you please open your eyes now and understand what the spirit is saying matter may be coming from a spiritual background where there are still spiritual things to resolve and my spirit man has picked up that thing that there could be barrenness in the future there could be certain things in the future are we together now and so while i am fighting to love her there is a resistance god is saying your commitment should now be to break that thing not just to think of marriage when it is resolved the force will leave and you find out all of a sudden after one miracle service your love for her stepped into a new dimension many of us are fighting something god is speaking he has been speaking for months i love you i love you you are not opening your eyes this night god is showing you it's a different thing if this lady is not virtuous but there is no known reason why i should not love her are we together now it's a sign we ignore it but it's a language in the spirit there could be foundational things brothers and sisters that may be rest in her family and that's what the spirit of god that's why there is that unrest the moment she tells you okay um mike when will you go and see my parents all of a sudden your heart is beating but this is what you were prepared for all the while listen every time you sense any unrest prolonged unrest in a relationship don't keep quiet about it there is an issue to be resolved it may not have anything to do with the person but it has to do with the spiritual influence that connects to the person are we together now please don't feel bad 90 percent of the people who get married and the woman changes or the man changes or you see them a prolonged period you know barrenness or one kind of thing like that the man will say i kept picking these signals i know people who have cried one week to their wedding as if 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 there is a way i can break this i prayed for many people who were married the moment they got married the man cannot even meet with his wife as a husband and wife no affection no nothing he cannot explain why so he will go out to try to sleep with another lady to verify and finds out that a house help in the house who is not even any standard to compare with his wife he has almost an addiction for her that means that he still has the passion for a woman but it can never be translated to madam something is wrong what could be wrong if you are losing affection it could be a message now that may not mean the relationship is not of god it may mean god is saying your priority now should be to stand together and challenge some things ladies this may be the reason why certain brothers came close to you and you found out that for reasons they don't have the courage to tell you they are halting because they are picking signals some brothers god is answering your question now as to why you plan asking that lady out since september but right now you don't want anybody to come around her but sincerely that fear you have prayed and fasted about it nothing has changed it's a message i'm interpreting that message to you right now is god helping us tonight it can be the same thing for the lady now I used to know a lady who there was a very strong covenant that was done she did not even know 
as in it was a strong covenant the mother went somewhere and did all kinds of things we believe in the blood of jesus but we are not unaware of the strategies of darkness all kinds of demonic dedications now listen there was a track record the first person she entered a relationship with it didn't reach two years he died she's a sincere lady she's born again but that guy died true story are we together now the second person she entered a relationship with he didn't die but his finances crashed from the day he stepped into her life i'm telling you this guy as in he crashed like to pieces now this other brother they were going out but this guy kept finding out that it's, it's like i don't know what it is like an invisible force i'm trying to be proud of this lady i'm trying to love her look god is answering somebody's question tonight i'm trying to sometimes the lady does not even understand or the guy does not understand and the lady is helpless she doesn't have the courage to explain this to anybody because people say you even have a guy and you are doing smell smell but the lady is telling you something is wrong this could be it and i told him i said what's the issue I, said, no. I spoke to the lady when she came i began to talk with her and i found out that there were some strong things that needed to be broken and shattered believe me thank god they are married but had that guy married that lady like that he would have been surprised it would no longer be an issue of love his life would have scattered there are men who have entered into the lives of ladies and they brought in certain atmospheres from the day he entered her life mysterious sickness this is why we pray for people i believe in ministering deliverance to people Lord. my concept of deliverance is very biblical but don't let anybody tell you it's unnecessary it's not just about you there must be a separation are we together let's see thank you so that could be one of the reasons why you are struggling to love your partner in fact once there is a struggle aside from the fact that it may not be the will of god that is usually the next area to check i'm teaching you right now because some of you will go back quickly some of you cannot wait for koinonia to finish so you run and call your friend and say i found the reason why you are always complaining to us that this guy is nice he buys you everything you are even thinking of how to dodge valentine this sunday because it's like when you are with him it's as if you are naked you cannot even tell what is happening to you yet you are supposed to love him so people told you that's how it, it starts just just keep doing it one day it will be real it's a lie sit down and flog the issue there is power in the name of jesus there is power in the name of jesus to break every chain break every chain break every chain Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Hallelujah. I saw a pattern in my family as I began to grow up. People make it in life, but they suffer. You know what I say, suffer. That language called is, that thing does, I didn't see it exist in my family. I saw people, something that can take you two months, you can spend 12 years. But you will achieve it i looked at a few of my cousins and i saw them following that pattern from my dad's side listen this is a very serious issue my father is the only not even the most the only successful person i come from a family of missionaries i saw a pattern with my cousins from the from the maternal side I found out that all the firstborns were males but there was always something a very tragic situation that will happen in their life either you will get somebody pregnant before marriage or something when I saw those things I said no 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 I shared with you my testimony born again filled with the Holy Spirit doing ministry but still being oppressed by demon spirits in the night my own was so bad it's not that I will sleep and mind I will see it but light came to me some of you are carrying atmospheres that are driving friends that's why everybody who comes close to you notices that something leaves them Jonah entered boat people lost money they lost properties because of his presence 
the ark of god entered the house of obed edom there is a presence you are carrying that may be responsible for what is going on in your relationship i want to stop here i have three other points but maybe next next week before we take on that I, if, if if there's time i may touch on that because i think we have we have gotten to a place that represents somewhere to pray on are we together break every chain break every chain break every chain yeah. break every chain please get set to pray not to go get set to pray we really have to pray to break every chain to break every chain, break every chain. Sing it to him. To break every chain. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. We will start the prayer with this last point. I like you to pray. You are going to challenge every atmosphere in your life that is stopping your relationship your marriage from moving to the next level i like you to pray lord what is that atmosphere in my life that drives everyone who comes close to me no one wants to be my friend no one wants to marry me there is an atmosphere i challenge that foundation lift your voice and pray Embracata na koto sote de bosh, regete te koto skara marava, membro koto ne marara. Break every chain. Pray koinonia, leke te ke de bosh soto bakata. This Valentine period, I contend in the name of Jesus, there must be change. That repulsive atmosphere that drives men from me that drives women from me that drives business partners from me that drives ministerial colleagues i challenge it i challenge it by the blood of jesus break every chain break every chain hallelujah listen I like you to pray when the man who was born blind jesus passed a certain city and they saw a man who had been born blind listen they said who seen that this man was born blind was it him or his father the disciples knew that something a generation can do can affect a generation i like you to pray and say whatever was done in my lineage that has an implication on my marriage my relationships i come by the rod of a higher priesthood in the name of jesus break every chain pray koinonia this is your liberty tonight I've entered 10 relationships none of them has worked people promise to marry me and disappoint me business partners come and they run away helpers come and they run away oh I break that chain I break that chain yeah. hallelujah hallelujah we are still going to pray listen i have seen human beings carry certain patterns i used to know somebody who when he comes into your life for the first five months he will bless you but after that time you must fight with him something must happen and tear that relationship i saw that happen in many relationships every time god wants to lift you god will send him when he comes into your life know that a season of lifting has come but as far as you are lifted 
he's the same person who will crash you back some of us are like that listen i like you to pray in the next two minutes i know our time is gone but please if you go home late tonight and you are free forever it's a good bargain we are going to pray for the next two minutes i like you to lay your hands on your head and prophesy pray and prophesy oh i break this i break this i break this this yoke it dies from my life it dies from my business it dies from my ministry in the name of jesus hallelujah now listen please put down your hands the last prayer point i tell you i feel fire in this room listen the last prayer we may not be able to take others let's respect time but the last prayer point you are going to pray passionately sisters listen it's not a sign of desperation to pray and call for the man not any man you don't need every man please you need the man brothers there are some of us do you know that many of us our life partners have come to pass us but something drove them away some of you your life partners are here but they cannot see you there are many ladies here who want to settle down this year please help them there are many ladies who want to settle down it's not a sin there are many brothers who want to settle down it's not a sin please put your ego behind and pray you see me joining you to pray put your ego and pray and say lord whoever should be in my life and is not in my life i call them forth now whoever should not be in my life and is in my life i release them right now pray 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 any man any woman in my life today who should not be in my life? Lord, I release that person. I release that person. Any business ally who should not be part of my business, I release that person. Anybody I'm in a relationship with who is not my husband, I release the person. Any lady I'm not in a relationship with who should not be my wife, I release that person. Pray. Any brother who should appear in my life, I call him forth. Any sister who should appear in my life, I call her forth. Every helper. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please forgive me for eating up your time. But the Lord is ministering a prayer request for me. We are going to do it this way. Brothers, you are going to pray and tear down every wall of lack of fruitfulness and advancement. Listen. There are many brothers whose destinies and advancement are tied down. They will never believe it. Because that's what is stopping some of us from getting married. You are going to pray that and prophesy advancement. Every lady here, you are going to lay your hands on your womb. While the brothers pray, you are going to pray to attack barrenness and unfruitfulness. Use your womb as a point of contact. Pray, pray, put your hands on your stomach and pray. Rekete tekete. Ye de re da 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 ba shere re re rox. Repokoto prekete lea. Rekete koto shata. 
Sisters, pray every spell, every enchantment of unfruitfulness, of barrenness, of lack of advancement. I cause it by the blood of Jesus. I cause it by the blood of Jesus. I cause it by the blood of Jesus. Brothers, pray, pray, pray. I'm making progress. I must make progress. I attack every spirit of stagnation. Growing old without making progress. I come against you in the name of Jesus. I need a change for me. I need a change. I need a change. Hallelujah. 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 Fire is burning in this place. Oh, I wish we had time. I wish we had time. There are prayers I would have led you into that would have turned some chains into pieces, I tell you. There are different kinds of prayers, brothers and sisters. You must pray strategically when it comes to commanding breakthrough. I did this for my life. I refuse to let some of you, your background alone, you can see all kinds of deliverance happening to people all around. Because this is a serious issue. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's pray one more prayer. Lord, from this Valentine, you are changing my life from this one this is the last valentine that i will go through in this frustration maritally whatever it is i'd like you to pray please take advantage of seasons our time is gone but pray don't say it does not concern me married or not open your mouth and pray Please lift your hands, everybody. Lift your hands, everyone, inside and outside. Lift your hands. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Hear me. Anyone here carrying any atmosphere that has been programmed by darkness to hinder your husband or your wife, your business partners, your ministerial helpers from entering into your life. I challenge that atmosphere right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I challenge that atmosphere right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. Every sister here desirous of settling down with a godly man, not a foolish man. In the name of Jesus Christ, we call for that man into your life. We call for that man into your life. We call for that man into your life. 
I pray for every brother here. You have struggled. People may not know, but you have struggled. In the name of Jesus, that struggle comes to an end tonight. Please help that brother. That struggle comes to an end tonight. That struggle comes to an end tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. Anyone here who is a victim of geography, your geographical location has implicated you spiritually. I stand tonight under this apostolic anointing and in the name of the Lord Jesus I break that influence from your life I break that influence from your life I break that influence from your life Every disfavor that appears every year in your life, a certain period of your life, it repeats itself. When things are about to happen well, when a brother comes to you, just when he's about to propose, something happens. When a sister is about to tell you, yes, something happens. Right now, I change it tonight in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now listen, last prayer. There are brothers here, there are sisters here who are ready to take their relationships to marriage but fear, lack of courage. What am I doing? Will, how will I take this brother to my parents? Will they think I'm not responsible? Brothers, I prophesy to you, between now and April, in the name that is above all names, take this as a prophecy. The progress you will make in your life will shock everyone mocking your God. I release the spirit of faith upon you. I release courage upon you. Every fear, 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 I curse it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and give Jesus praise. We have to stop. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.